Sustained human action to eliminate greenhouse gas emissions has the potential to alter society's course on climate. But limiting the average global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees is at risk of slipping out of reach, unless there is a rapid increase in public-private collaboration and actions to accelerate emission reductions across global value chains. Success is dependent upon government support and COP28 is a chance to bring industry and policymakers together to address the current challenges. Welcome Esther as the new co-chair of the WEF Alliance and hi Jesper. It's great to be together with you uh, today. Uh, the Alliance has uh, grown to be probably the biggest CEO-led climate action group in the world. We have all committed to Net Zero 2050, we have all committed to report our missions of scope one, two, and three, and we have all committed to follow science-based targets on the path down to net zero. So Esther, as we head into uh, the COP of this year, where do you see the priorities for us as a private sector? Thank you, Christian, for your leadership on driving this alliance and on the strong voice that you're bringing on this important milestone, going closer to COP, where business can show the power of collaborating with authorities. The CEO of a Climate Alliance is a perfect example of the imprint that business can bring in on our path to carbon neutrality. The CEO Climate Alliance is a business community, represents a business community that together we generate more than uh, 4 trillion US dollars and also within our collective uh, uh, imprint, CO2 emissions at the same size of uh, US. But we are fully committed on our path to carbon neutrality and have already made targets of uh, close to the same level of emission that Japan makes in. COP will be a perfect place to bring, to collaborate, to partner, to create an environment where business and governments move us collectively one step forward to the path of carbon neutrality. Thank you, Esther and Christian. I agree fully. We are in the most important decade of humankind when it comes to climate change. Tackling the climate crisis will require massive systemic change, as well as new ways on how we work, how we live, consume and treat nature. This September was close to one degree warmer than average over the last 30 years, meaning that climate change is no longer a distant threat, rather a living reality for billions of people. We see positive signs and movements, and we know that it is possible to have emissions by 2030. Yet we have to speed up and scale solutions that have a real impact on emissions. As the biggest CO community, we are committed to the Paris Agreement and to reduce our emissions in line with science and transparently report on the progress. Latest results show that we in the Alliance are decreasing emissions ahead of the SPTI's 1.5 aligned targets. However, there is so much more we can do to get the world on track for 1.5 degrees. In 23, we as an Alliance of more than 100 companies are driving three strategic priorities. The first one is the area of decarbonization. We need to raise ambitions and actions connected to Scope 3. Our total Scope 3 is 1.3 gigaton, which is approximately the size of Japan's annual emissions. We have defined supplier asks and are developing an online support hub that provides suppliers and alliance members with relevant materials to kickstart their journey and reduce emissions. Esther and Christian, do you want to introduce the remaining priorities? Thanks, Jesper. I uh, fully agree that uh, scope free is probably where we can have the biggest impact overall as a, as a group. But there's also some more simple lower hanging fruit in scope two. And therefore scope two is another priority of uh, our alliance. And uh, we measure our footprint and between 19 and 21, we actually reduced uh, the footprint by 32% within scope two of our members. So that's pretty significant. But I think more importantly, there are many countries where you can buy green energy, but there's also many countries where this is very difficult and it's not the capacity that is already there. So this is where the concept of uh, power purchase agreements is important. And we have you know, spread that through our group. And it basically means that in countries where there's not enough green energy, we can uh, make a, a promise to purchase green energy at a certain price for a certain length of time. And that allows the local utility to go to a bank and get financing to build basically new facilities. So these uh, purchase power purchase agreements have grown by a factor of four. We're now about 80 of those that exist around the world. And this will stimulate, of course, the creation of new facilities that produce green energy. 
Thanks, Christian. I mean, uh, it is all about the scope three and for sure of scope two, which is the place that, that we can uh, influence. And then we can also influence on the voice that we bring in, driving, advo asking and seeking for the right advocacy through the regulation that's going to accelerate the change. And this is also a place that the Alliance is taking a leadership uh, uh, position with a letter that we have uh, co-signed uh, many of us bringing our voice to the authorities on an ask on how we could accelerate the past, that how we can accelerate moving forward to the to the to this world of uh, moving into carbon neutrality. We are bringing in, the, in a, a clear voice uh, as asking to stop subsidizing the past, bringing a, a challenging the value of, of the one trillion US dollars that governments are spending, giving and subsidizing fossil-based alternatives that are hindering the speed of penetration. We are bringing our voice also willing to collaborate on how we partner with, uh, with authorities to remove unnecessary steps that hinder the speed of the penetration. Today, it takes up to six years to get the licensing periods, to get the licensing permits to put green energy. In biotechnology, for example, it takes eight years in Europe to register a microbe to replace fertilizers when you can do it in two years in other geographies like US. So it is about creating the framework, creating the paradigm that we collectively move forward for the future ahead of us and we remove unnecessary roadblocks that they're hindering the speed. We make two further points in our uh, recommendations to governments. The first one is around procurement. Procurement is a huge business and uh, governments procure a lot. In the EU alone, procurement by government corresponds to 14% of GDP. So it's a very big business. And what we recommend is that governments would take into account the green credentials, the, the net zero companies, and favor those over the others. And this would send a huge you know, market signal also into small and medium companies that exist in all the different countries and encourage a lot of them to also jump on the net zero 2050 train. The second point is around carbon capture and storage. So if you look at the IPCC report, it's pretty clear that we can achieve net zero 2050 only if we have very substantial carbon capture and storage in place. And yet the technologies to capture carbons are not really developed at this stage. There's a few startups, but it's very, very young technology. And yet it will have to be big scale and mature by 2050 to have the effect that we need. So the recommendation for government is really to invest significantly in R&D and support some of these nation technologies so that we're ready by 2050 when we really need it. Thank you, Christian. The last priority is about simplifying and harmonize climate disclosure and measuring standards as it's essential to drive transparent ESG reporting and disclosure. As companies, we have clear standards for financial reporting, but ESG reporting has remained unclear for too long. As an alliance, we ask governments to set globally harmonized and allied reporting legislation to avoid unnecessary burdens for businesses. Transparency is important. However, it needs to be harmonized across countries in the same format. We believe that the success of new ESG reporting standards will only be realized if companies that operate globally can create comparable disclosures in a cost-effective way. We need to be business smart, and that is why we ask regulators and standard setters to simplify and harmonize climate disclosure and measuring standards. Around 100 CEOs have signed this letter in the run-up of COP28. Alliance member CEOs will be present at COP28 to discuss with global leaders how to take these policy recommendations forward. If you want to support these policy asks and help accelerate action on emissions, please join the discussion online or at COP28 and help us push for cross-sector collaboration to achieve net zero, because every fraction of a degree counts.